The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Here's where we find out how many things changed while I was uh, out and about. But, oh, yep, should be, should have heard that. Yep, should be good. So, um, well, we've had a couple of weeks since we've last talked. I think our last day was the 20th. Uh, got a few things going on, but uh, I was pretty surprised that uh, the market rebounded as quickly as it did today. But I was pretty sure that we were going to quickly see the lows of the day in today and put that in my newsletter. Um, I added one position. I had another one that... Um, I won't say it got away. It just never got to the price point that I could buy the calls on it. I am fairly, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say bullish, but I would say positive on the market. I don't think that there's a great deal to be seen here in the near future. Uh, but uh, I also think there are a bunch of people uh, that are, I, I, I don't know what the deal is, but I don't think they're here to make money. Um, when I continue to see all through last week, it's sometimes uh, during the day, the percentage of shorts and Apple on that day was 30%. Now, this is a company that's got $280 billion. It's got a fairly decent market uh, that's probably not going away anytime soon. You can maybe say it's worth 250 bucks or 200 bucks, but it's not going to zero. It's not like somebody is going to create a better battery uh, and go up against Tesla and Tesla will sell no cars next year. That's a real possibility. If someone makes a significant change in technology uh, in a handful of different things in a car, uh, that could make a, a huge change in what's going on. Is it 100%? No. 50%? Yeah, someone could come out with something better. Uh, it's very early in the EV car market, not so early in smartphones. It, it is exceedingly rare that you get into a long and established business and something just comes out of the woodwork. It's when everybody's looking at it. And I'm going to say that smartphones are now are an established mature business model. Uh, they aren't on the cutting edge of new technologies. Uh, and of course, generally, uh, you can just see stuff, but you know, you short the weak and you go long the strong. And as far as I can see, they're doing nothing but creating uh, a massive pool of shorts that are going to have to get squeezed out. With Apple being 13, 15% of, of uh, many of the things like the NASDAQ, how can this market go down when the biggest single or second biggest single or third big, biggest uh, single uh, stock would have to significantly see something change? Now, today uh, is, well, actually tomorrow is the first day of the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. We might see a few things out there. I think Samsung was already showing a new phone today, which is kind of uh, like the SE line on Apple, which is the cost-reduced five and $600 phones from Apple. Uh, they're doing the same thing. They're doing the S10 uh, El Cheapo, which I don't know how many people are going to be interested in. Uh, but it makes for good advertising on these carriers. And, of course, uh, if you watched any TV over the weekend, you would have seen massive amounts of ads for AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile uh, for 5G phones. Uh, T-Mobile's probably been the most aggressive of saying T uh, 5G phones are available. Now, um, 
that part of the market and the semis uh, really go into March. That's when the big uh, convention for cell phones comes out or it goes, and that's in Spain, in Barcelona, Spain. It's generally like in the second week of March. I haven't seen a date for it yet. I haven't worried about it, but it's that's a big, mature business. It's probably not going to turn on a dime, uh, but people are betting on it like it does. Uh, we also have people talking about Boeing uh, being virtually worthless. Well, the stock market doesn't agree. Uh, it's up what? Uh, it's up a buck fifty-four on a day where everybody uh, for the last three days has been protecting nothing but the end of the world. Um, in fact, I, I wrote this morning in my newsletter too that probably the best thing you could do is turn off any of those cable, all of the cable uh, television channels. I don't care which one, which particular persuasion you're at. Um, they don't have your best interest at heart. If they did, uh, then they'd probably apologize for all the false stories they've had over the last four or five years that seem to be never ending. Uh, I was, where was I yesterday? Uh, they had CNN on there, and uh, someone was talking about how uh, Australia proves uh, global warming. And then I had to think, well, I guess these reporters aren't smart enough to actually check uh, in Australia, because if you look there in the papers from Australia, they're going to say and tell you that 200 of the fires have been purposely set. They had nothing to do with global warming. They had to do with some sicko lighting fires in a place that I've been to many times. Uh, and uh, where three-fourths of the country is a tinderbox just waiting to burn something. It certainly looks like the old west with uh, the old uh, blowing, uh, what are those little balls? Uh, what are the, the thing that they that blow down the street? I'll think about it. Um, tumbleweeds, yeah, it's, it kind of looks like that. I went across uh, in to visit one of our clients who, he's, I think we're like 100 miles in. Uh, for those that have never been to Australia, basically you get rain within about 100 miles, maybe 50 miles of each coast. You get a little bit more up in the north uh, northeast of the country. But it's kind of a big stinking desert for the most part. And that's why uh, you don't read about lots of wheat coming from Australia. You do hear a lot of uh, iron ore and copper and everything else because Literally, it's a one big dust, uh, uh, dust bowl. So it's not uncommon to see um, many years, 10 years, of, uh, of no rain in some of those. In fact, I went to a uh, – or went through a town that had had – I think – I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it had had five inches of rain in 20 years. It's not uncommon to think – that whatever grows there and dies is eventually going to burn. Uh, it's uh, 120 degrees in the shade. Um, but it's, you know, if you just look around, you'll know that everybody's trying to lie to you. Just to kind of back up, understand that uh, there's a lot more to, out there to be seen in the world. And uh, yeah, those guys are probably not doing you any favors. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. up six points on the S&P cash when we look at some of the other things that matter out there, four and a half billion shares, which is kind of an okay day. Kind of interesting that we had a little bit of downtime. Of course, today is probably when we're going to get most of the fund buying for the month, just the way that the uh, uh, first of the year came in and and uh, uh, the uh, geopolitical issues on Thursday and Friday. Um the markup is on today. Uh, the market, much more important uh, probably in the, the close of tomorrow. But again, uh, that takes us right into uh, options expiration cycle. Uh, the 8th will be the delta neutral day for options expiration. And of course, the 17th is the actual expiration. But uh, we should have a little bit more volatility on Wednesday. But uh, looking at the options, I saw nothing out there that says the end of the world is nigh, although uh, every time I turn on the TV, they're trying to convince me the end of the world's going to happen. Uh, just if I believe whatever they're trying to sell, just believe it. And then I guess, I don't know, if it does it still happen? I don't know exactly what they're trying to push, but I'm not buying it. I just, whatever they tell me, I think, Probably the opposite is the truth. So uh, that's part of being a contrarian. Um, let's talk a little history, and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1838, Samuel Morse Telegraph System is demonstrated for the first time at the Speedwell Ironworks in Morristown, New Jersey, to telegraph a device which used electrical impulses to transmit encoded images over a wire uh, would eventually rep uh, revolutionary long-distance communication, reaching the heights of its popularity in the 1920s and 30s. And, of course, they really didn't even have uh, chargers for batteries back then. They would just literally... Like today, you put in a D cell and you throw it away. So uh, there, there was kind of an expense in moving those batteries around. Of course, almost all the, the uh, telegraph systems were along uh, train routes so that they could easily move those heavy batteries uh, to uh, 
to do those. But eh, kind of interesting thing. And of course, uh, a few of us know a little bit of da 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 and all the rest of the stuff. But on this day in 1938, uh, the telegraph system got started. Kind of one of the biggest uh, moves in technology, eh, that and the train probably of the 1800s and the, and the rifle. I guess all three of those things. Um, you racing the penguins <laughs> on Phillip Island? No, I wasn't racing penguins on Phillip Island. Um, I, I, I want to say that it was either 1999 or 2000 I was down there. But uh, no, I rented uh, uh, the guy that ran our office in Sydney was a big racer too. And I had a uh, Ducati 998 and he found somebody from Ducati down there for me to rent a bike from. And uh, so I, I brought all my leathers and everything down there. And when I was uh, uh, there for two weeks uh, looking around, we went down there uh, for a track day. Um, not a lot of legal issues down there that they have uh, like we have here in the United States. But uh, yeah, I remember two things. Uh, they just gotten rid of uh, the ability for anybody to carry guns. And the guy that I was with got mugged and about 20 other people that we knew got mugged because as soon as no one carried guns, if you were out past about dark, you were going to get attacked because uh, everybody was sure that, uh, of course, uh, no one had any guns, which I kind of that was kind of what I remembered most of that trip and the racing uh, and uh, being out in the outback once. And I was there with uh the, the the CEO of the company, and uh, he was from Britain. I think he was like three years old during the uh, uh, in 1945. But he, you know, he talked like he was there for the Blitz. I'm sure he didn't remember anything, but he talked a lot about it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, we'd be down there in the outback uh, somewhere, and there'd be a couple of people who looked like they fell right out of Crocodile Dundee, and they'd. Uh, hear him talk, and they'd come over and go, you're a whinging palm. Uh, and uh, whinging is uh, what they uh, basically think all the English do, which is uh, complain all the time. But uh, eh, it was a lot of fun down there. Okay, uh, what do we want to start looking at? Well, first of all, uh, I made a kind of bold prediction that, about, uh, that I didn't think that there was much of a chance of Boeing uh, hitting 300, mostly because, again, everybody that wanted to help me was telling me how much uh, that we needed to wait for $330 for Boeing uh, to test uh, 300 bucks, and that's where you wanted to buy it. Uh, rarely do these folks want to help you out. Uh, it's kind of like uh, asking a con man to hold your uh, wallet while you, uh, you know, you're doing something, just for safekeeping, of course. Uh, no chance that anybody's going to take cash out of it. But uh, it, it, it's not like Wall Street has a bunch of, uh, uh, of uh, um, what was her name? St. Mary in India? I don't think of it. Uh, but uh, these people, you're swimming with the sharks. These people, it's not their job to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm not going to make a difference in the market. I don't have some kind of big hedge fund. I have my positions. They're in the newsletter. That's about it. Uh, I'll do better if my positions do well in the newsletter. I'll do worse if they don't. Uh, you kind of know which side my bread is buttered on. Of course, uh, talking your own book or trying to get people out of the position so you can buy it cheaper or to buy it at the highs is generally the modus operandi of most folks on Wall Street. Uh, so when I heard everybody over about a one-week period, and I, I don't watch CNBC so much as uh, I read a lot of blogs that says uh, what they talk about, I don't want to spend too much time listening to it. I will listen. Uh, I will uh, read it, which is kind of the way that I handle news events too. I want to avoid their opinion because it's probably wrong. Uh, but when I hear the which really nothing but opinions for somebody like CNBC and the people they have on there. Um, you can, one, figure out that most of the time they're going to be wrong, or two, they're probably outright lying. Um, and it's uh, I, I want to say that the king of all time had to be either, you know, you got this thing either stupid 
or uh, or criminal. And I'm not exactly sure what this guy was. I think maybe been this stupid, but uh, he was bullish uh, going into 2000. Joe Batapaglia was his name. I don't think he I think he died a few years ago, but the guy was uh, an incessant bull all the way through uh, pretty much 2003 in the lows in the S and P. And as soon as it hit the low. Uh, he turned bearish, which is probably the best signal to turn bullish. So, you know, if I'm doing anything, in fact, we were t I was talking to Steve maybe several years ago, and I was talking to him about somebody that literally was wrong all the time. And uh, Steve uh, Rhodes said something very smart. He goes, uh, those people are worth gold. Just do the opposite of what they are doing. And that's, uh, that's really what you're thinking about. Anyway, we'll be back. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Boeing and maybe uh, taking the road less traveled. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, we've got uh, Rick in Denver. How are you doing today, Rick? Good. I think taking my call. Dave. So what are, we, what are we looking at here? Uh, XOP. So what are you thinking? Well, I want to enter it, but I think it looks overbought. But I just want to get your idea on what you're thinking an entry point would be. It's it's like the um, exploration. Yeah, I don't see a lot of reason to be in exploration. 
Well, I think I'd, it, I'd rather it, be in the crude it, itself. Uh huh. Um, the reason is there's just uh, exploration was great when there was huge amounts of money being spent for offshore and all that stuff. Not uh -huh. so much. You just kind of dig a ditch. Uh, probably spend a lot more money or buy Caterpillar or something like that because that's where all the money is for exploration now. Um, you just go up there and strip mine a bunch of, uh, of uh, uh, oil shale up in the northwest. It's cheap. You don't have to worry about insurance. Uh, you don't have to worry about the BP oil spill stuff. Um, that business has changed. And while there's still some of it, it's nothing like it was uh, in 2006. So we've had a, a titanic change in that business, mostly because of the BP oil spill. So, you know, you, you certainly don't see that kind of money being spent in Canada, although they have more wells, probably twice as many new wells this year uh, as uh, they had last year. Um, you just... There's, I think a lot of the oil has been found. So why this thing can move up from 20 bucks to 24 bucks? My guess is it would come back to maybe 22.50 or something like that, and maybe you could buy it. But uh, I think the money's probably being made now in actually trading the underlying crude. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's why I wanted your opinion on it, and it kind of took off, and it, it, it did take off. It went from 1990 to, I don't know, 24-something, and I never got in, but... Yeah, it's just in a big uh, trading range. to pull back a little. It seemed like it, it did have some decent volume when it took it's, off. Yeah, it's okay. It's just in a big but, trading range from about 20 bucks to 24 bucks, maybe 23.61. But, you know, we, when you went higher on Friday... Uh, on the third, you had 33 million shares compared to the last time up there at 40 million shares. So it didn't do it with volume. You got kind of a sideways day here now. Um, again, I everything I see isn't people uh, making giant oil wells and uh, building giant rigs uh, up in Sweden. They're towing out to the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, those days are, at least for the midterm, I think you're kind of over. We're going to, it's kind of like anything that has a disaster. You have to go through a long time. And then, you know, when we really need oil again, they'll push out those giant derricks. And there'll be a lot of money in that exploration and, and uh, rig building stuff. But I don't know. There's just so much oil in the oil shell these days. It just doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon, at least the foreseeable future. Um, if that was a much bigger issue, maybe in another country, but really they don't have the oil shells that we do. But again, the, com the company's making big money on oil shale, Caterpillar, towing stuff around in big dump trucks, uh, not, yeah, you not, yeah, not drilling holes, uh, per se is the old way of doing stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of like a couple of areas uh, they really haven't paid off quite yet, and that is the transportation of uh, liquefied natural gas in shipping contain uh, in those uh, ships businesses. They kind of go up and down, but I think that if we get natural gas to stabilize at a price, uh, we should be able to export a huge amount from the United States. So I kind of like that part of it, uh, and then just naturally trading the up and down in uh, crude. So, and in the offshoots of it, but, uh, you know, there's so much natural gas, uh, that's available, uh, that literally it's not affordable, uh, to send back out to the, uh, uh, to even put in the pipelines anymore to take it anywhere because there's so much of it. And that tells you that there's probably a lot of oil too, right? So it does, yeah, I guess. So I'm di I'm just not thinking that this. I mean, we're going to have. We've really got a tale of two cities now. We've got the rest of the world, uh, and a couple of those places have oil. We have oil, and now are net exporter of oil. So if everything goes to hell in a handbasket in the Middle East, we'll still have oil and enough. It's the uh, rest of the world that has real problems. China, 
those kind of places. And that's where you really see, uh, I think, kind of the most interesting part of what's going on uh, in the Mideast is if we get in a row with Iran and we turn their oil spigots off, well, 80% of that oil is going to China. They're the big losers in this, <laughs> not us. So, you know, whatever else happens, uh, I think that the narrative out there uh, is actually fairly bullish for the United States uh, and uh, this kind of stuff, uh, the U UNG and uh, all the other stuff. I mean, we're kind of separate now. It used to be we were, you know, very linked. So there's, you know, it, I guess over the years, the, the uh, North Sea oil and the United States kind of diverged. And it, it just kind of seems like that North Sea uh, and Mid East oil continue to diverge. But, uh, you know, we're going to find more oil and that stuff happens. But I, I you think crude's kind of topping out, do you think? I think it's probably we had a, a nice little pop with the Iranian deal. Uh, the question is do you think the Iranians uh, want to start a brouhaha? And from everything I read, uh, Russia is about on the same tipping point that the USSR was in 1990. Uh, yeah. Putin wants to leave and retire and spend all his ill-gotten gains. But if he does, he'll probably be knocked off by whoever comes in behind him. So he can't really go anywhere. Um, and then you see, like, people in Iran who would love to uh, do uh, evil. But at the same time... <sighs> Uh, they got oil, and that's about it. Um, hey, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. You bet. So, yeah, I think a lot of uh, the analysis has just been horrible over the last few days. Uh, but uh, it's not the first time. I did really enjoy uh, this morning listening to uh, Larry Pesavento uh, because uh, he was talking about the first – Gulf War and how the market took off the next day. Uh, and I was just had gotten back from the Mideast for delivering something. And I was staying in a hotel. Uh, uh, what was that, 1991? I think it was. Uh, in a hotel. Oh, we're going to the break. We'll be back in a minute. But uh, I remember watching the news that night and everybody telling how the market was going to be uh, in the toilet the next day. And of course, uh, one of the biggest days of all time. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal full-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And I'm getting an email out here. I think it's got a, yep, that's who I want. Okay. Just uh, got to work even during the breaks out here. Uh, a good heads up uh, by our uh, friend in Pennsylvania uh, in the Tiger's Den, and that is that sales forces breaking out. Um, you didn't need that much volume. You were looking at six, seven million shares we're going to get well we got six right now so certainly have it i would have liked to seen maybe eight billion shares by now but on a horrible day like this when everybody's speaking about the end of the world uh certainly uh much better than one would think um again we're going to start earnings cycle starting again in another what, 30 days or so 45 days and I can imagine that the market's going to want to take a breather and see how those earnings are before it really pushes significantly higher. Uh, but this one just wasn't one of the ones that broke out and really ran uh, like the rest. But uh, certainly a solid breakout with volume. We'll see how the end of the day comes in. Again, this is fun buying. And maybe this is the... Uh, the bell of the ball for this year to catch up uh, to a great deal of the rest. Uh, what else do we have out here? You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, you can actually put a, uh, a uh, message in the den or call me at 877-927-6648. NFLX. Uh, Netflix. Um, eh, not much going on with it. It's up a little bit as the market is too, but uh, it's got a great amount of resistance to go through uh, uh, to, to about 345. I had a question uh, just before the show uh, about this, and I, I said I would talk about it on the air. Uh, but as far as the business model, uh, what's going on and why uh, do all the uh, big stars tend to be moving toward Netflix or Apple or um, some of the others. And it's kind of a simple answer. I think since I worked in the industry, I didn't think to verbalize it uh, in a lot of the talks that we had before. Uh, but there's, there's kind of the two systems that were kind of set up. And it it was basically antitrust issue. Uh, but they separated the theaters from the uh, actual production of the movies. And what you ended up with is a second layer of people that actually distribute the films between the producers in Hollywood and the local theaters all across the country. And that came because, of course, uh, theater or the uh, movie owners uh, would uh, control when movies came out and try to r run everybody else out of business. It was a huge antitrust kind of issue. Um, and the, the, the eventual court case basically made them split up the distribution of the movies from the production of the movies. Well, 
Come to find out that most of the people that ended up with these distribution deals were sons and daughters and aunts and uncles and everybody uh, just uh, maybe six degrees of separation from the uh, thieves in Hollywood uh, who made the movies. And it became a huge way to siphon off a lot of cash and then tell the, uh, tell the stars, well, you know, we made this much money, but the distribution company took it all. So we don't have as much to give you. It was a great excuse uh, for those in Hollywood that uh, are all talking about how much better they are than the rest of us. Um, which uh, had a high economy with the truth when it came to negotiating deals and then reneging on those deals even after they were made. Uh, so when you actually look at the business part of it, what Netflix does, uh, what uh, Amazon is able to do is normally take that money that would go, uh, that is funneled off to all these uh, distribution companies and uh, give it to the movie stars. Now, the movie stars don't get any back end on the movie or anything like that. But guess what? They get the money up front. If it's a dog, they still get the same amount of money up front. If they make a bunch of dogs, maybe no one's going to hire them again, which is just kind of normal. Uh, but when you're looking at uh, what was the one that came out on, I think it was on Netflix, over Christmas, it was a, make, uh, a Michael Bay movie. And he's never been one uh, known for one to make really great movies, but just a lot of things blowing up, people dying, uh, everything uh, happening, uh, kind of a roller coaster ride, not really based on uh, good uh, character development, but uh, mostly things and cars and everything blowing up. Um, he was able to make a movie that had a lot of action in it, and a lot of that money uh, came from uh, being able to not have to have uh, another 10 or $15 million siphoned off uh, for these uh, distribution companies. And I think that's probably the, still the biggest uh, weakness uh, that theaters and the traditional movie uh, companies have, and that is going to be that as long as they try to go through distribution, uh, they're at a huge dis. Uh, a huge disadvantage uh, to uh, Disney and the rest. Now, Disney, kind of interesting, uh, had one good flick, and then it's trying to convince them that this morning show is some kind of great thing. I've talked to a bunch of people that saw it. Uh, they thought not so much. Of course, the uh, Star Wars flick with young Yoda, baby Yoda in it, uh, is already over, uh, and there's not a lot to replace it. Um, I've wondered how fast we would get the uh, churn in Disney. Uh, but uh, they got a couple of things on it, but the, not that much. I think when it's all done, it's going to take Disney five years to actually get into the level of production uh, to compete with Netflix. You know, five years is five years, but uh, in that time, you could see a lot of churn for Disney. And I just think that the eventual core customer for Disney is a uh, People with young kids, I mean, that's going to be their strength. Uh, maybe they can get into the level of a Netflix or an Amazon Prime, but doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. When you do look at the chart, they did break out. Uh, they really didn't. Uh, I mean, they had one big day, uh, not a lot of follow through. It's pulled back under the previous highs. Uh, and as long as this thing's under like 147, um, it really doesn't look that good. It's got two big gaps below. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking that uh, the why they made a lot of money in this last uh, Star Wars flicks over Christmas, it was a horrible movie. Uh, some of the other stuff that they're turning out that I hear for their, uh, uh, for their uh, streaming service, also probably not all that good. So, you know, could you see 135 on this? Um, for the streamers, I have a feeling that, you know, the competition's going to get tough uh, over the uh, coming year. I'm, I'm not really thinking that these guys have the kind of push uh, that maybe uh, everybody else did. So There's going to be a lot of competition. $5 uh, a month, Disney, probably not too bad now. They're going to have to spend a lot of money uh, to get uh, the kind of content 
really be successful in streaming. We'll be back after this. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And what else do we have? Uh, I think that's it. Um, We've got one segment left. Let's just go through and see. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we got to get the market moving. And uh, yeah, we'll get a little bit of uh, speed under our tail. We'll get a, a lot better. But again, I'm not expecting a huge move upward in the indexes. Uh, but uh, there's nothing out here that says the wheels are going to fall off the wagon. Uh, we've got, uh, what, uh, seven trading days uh, now between now and expiration that's normally bullish the options look at worst flat into that um but uh as long as the shorts keep shorting i don't think we have a high in sight now if they quit shorting we get like a 50 point move in the s p and zero shorts for that day I will say that that's probably a good sign of capitulation uh, for those that uh, are uh, on that end of the world bend uh, where everything is uh, just another crisis. Uh, some people call them the uh, 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 dramatists, uh, too much drama. Um, life's not really like that very much. 
I think we could see a couple of highs, maybe at least short-term highs and things like gold and, and uh, crude over the next couple of days. So we'll see that. Uh, and then we'll look at some of the other companies. A little bit is down out here. Um, didn't get a real chance to look at it in the SMHs. But uh, we've had a nice run. We're getting a little pullback in those right now. And my guess in the SMHs is that we probably have a fairly decent, uh, if we don't get any bad news, probably a decent possibility of a low out here. We've got a doji going into this gap up. The gap up had 5 million shares. Uh, today we're down on about 2.3 million shares. So probably in the next day or so, look for some kind of low if we continue with the light volume in the SMHs. Um, well, we'll get back in the saddle this week after a couple of weeks being. Uh, well, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.